Good morning. It's coming up to uh, five o'clock. I had an early night last night, so I'm uh, <laughs> up and about. Uh, just been reading a story, a uh, news story about the shopping malls in USA closing down at a rate of knots. Uh, when I, when I um, was over in New Jersey for work, for a job, uh, on the Saturday, ordered a taxi and said, take me to the nearest shopping mall. I want to see a traditional American shopping mall <laughs> near Piscat Piscataway. Uh, and it was in the middle of nowhere. Strange, you know, that, well, all these trees everywhere, you know, trees everywhere. So, could you see uh, the where the local town was? So, I fancied going from there to the local town to go to a, a bar, you know, just experience it. But, uh, <laughs> you can't walk anywhere, you know. I, 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 I you know, I asked someone where's the nearest. Uh, local town. Oh, I don't know. Just jump in again. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. So, <laughs> so I thought, oh, bugger at this. So I went back to the hotel and then uh, got another taxi and went to New Brunswick, which was a few miles down the road, down this, this road called River, River Road or something it was called. Yeah, New Brunswick, old town. Around the corner was Rutgers University. Uh, University, Rutgers, quite a, quite a famous. A few miles away was Princeton University. It's it, it obviously well. New Brunswick was an old town. Old well, I don't know if it's a city. It was all right, you know. So I spent the afternoon and evening there. Oh, oh yeah, that's what I did. And then I caught another taxi. I went to New York in the middle of the night. Dropped me off at Times Square. And then, all that. And then I got a taxi back. And Well, I was going to stay one night and uh, point the direction to a hotel. But I didn't have my passport on me. So it wasn't long after 9-11 uh, happened, happened in 2001. I didn't have my passport with me, and he wouldn't let me stay. <laughs> so, uh, well, I could have said I was American, but I... <laughs> so anyway, so I just, uh, and then uh, yellow cab came back. Uh, it was all right, you know. It cost a bit, but all part of the experience, isn't it? It cost even more if I had a hotel room for the night. That would have been another hundred dollars or something. Yeah. That was an experience anyway. Yeah, I made the most of it. Yeah. Because um, there was, you know, um, working on a Friday and the engineers who I was working with were off for the weekend and everything, so... Turned up again on Monday morning. A few more days. I was with a fella. Um, yep, what it was, I was putting together and setting up a laser welder. And a fella came, he was a laser welding expert. He was holding the classes, uh, he was holding a class for, for the operators and the engineers about it, how to work it. There were a few problems. The uh, fiber optic cable, thick fiber optic cable, I sent all the power to the laser in the machine. I got damaged in transit. And I think what it was was um, I found it out of its box on top of a test set model, uh, test set box type thing. And uh, I think they must, they must have uh, dropped it onto the floor. The cleaners, were, you know, because it was in the clean room and they were always cleaning there. And uh, I think that's what happened anyway. But I 
expensive cable, fiber optic cable, thick fiber optic cable, but that thick. And it comes from this um, power unit, and it's very, very high power. So we had to call out the bloody, and call out um, the local engineer in the USA, and he came from God knows where, Texas, I think. Oh, it's a bit of a palaver, man. And then with his scopes, he looked down the end of the fiber optic thing and said, Smash the bits, man. This has been dropped. And you know, it's hard for us, you know. So there we are. Uh, you know, uh, they were told to keep it in the box. Don't take the cable out. Very fragile. But there we are. It could have happened anyway. Could have happened in transit. On shipping. It could have happened anyway. I looked at the, bo uh, the cargo box, big cargo box, tough cargo box, flat. And look what any damage on that. And there was scuffs on the side and things like that. So definitely uh, something happened in shipping. There we go. So I was there for until the next weekend waiting for all this to be done. And fired it up and I had to do a couple of mods. The... The fella uh, said that too many safeties have been put on it. Doesn't need that these many safeties. Because each time uh, new components were brought into this protected thing, it, it was it was a palaver you had to reboot the PC and everything. And uh, no one and with production, time is money. So he said, yeah, yeah, just get rid of that so that each time they, each time the, the protective screen, right? each time they lift the protective screen, you have to fucking uh, re-upload the software from the PC into the PLC controller, programmable logical controller, and things like that, you know. Anyway, got it all done. Yeah. Strange, uh, strange place. It's, it's funny, you know, New Jersey. Like, the actual factory was between Piscataway, where my hotel was, and New Brunswick, along this River Valley Road, or whatever it was called. Yeah. Twenty years ago, no? Mm. Old, just over twenty years ago. It was then January, February 2002. Like one day it was barely above freezing points. 32 in 32 Fahrenheit in the US money. The next day it was 60. Strange weather. Just turned just like that. There we are then, so Sunday. Maybe Sunday's on. Hmm. I just, just do these videos, just do yap. <laughs> yeah. Right, have a good Sunday, oh. Almost five. Four, three, two, one.